Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over the market, let's go over Tesla, let's discuss what is happening and what we can expect moving into next week. So as usual, if you enjoy, don't forget to hit that like button, it does help a lot. Again, this is not financial advice, I am not a financial advisor, and of course, my membership section on YouTube is live, the link is below $3 a month, where I share my intraday thoughts on Tesla essentially as it's moving throughout the day. So let's just jump into it. Tesla closing the day up ever so slightly, up about 0.7%, unfortunately underperforming the market, but it will be closing us at pretty much right around $220 per share, uh, which again, compared to the QQQ, for instance, is a little bit of an underperformance, no doubt. But let's discuss it and let's talk about it. So ever since this hammer candle we had a couple of days ago, we've had a phenomenal rally, right? Beautiful, beautiful rally. We broke out of that descending uh, 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 wedge that we've been talking about for a while, right? Uh, and then we had a nice rally ever since, went up almost to 230, which is very nice to see. However, we did give up a, quite a lot of the gains today, right? The majority of the gains have been given up today, and we did end up closing a slightly bearish looking candle on the daily as well. So let's discuss all of that together. So um, we came up to the 21 email, right? We talked. I talked about how I personally expect a rejection either around the 220s ish or close to the 230s, right? But like in general, the 220s, I expect essentially turbulence. I expect some rejection around this area, and so far that's exactly what we're seeing, right? As we came up just ever so slightly past the 21 EMA, and of course got smacked back down. But thankfully, the 200-day moving average is kind of holding us a little bit, giving us some support, which is great to see. However, with that being said, I do believe that there is a bit more pain ahead, and I'll discuss that as well. So pretty much the way I look at it is as follows. We did gap fill today, by the way, which is good, but we still have a massive gap right under us sitting at 206 pretty much. The way I look at it is as follows, right? Again, on the 65 minute chart, we are obviously entering overbought territories, right? That's exactly where we are. There's a chance that we get one more little pop, maybe on Monday. I wouldn't be surprised if we get one more pop a little bit, you know, roughly into this range, maybe even up to 230. But I, I again, ultimately, I still expected this area to be an overall bull trap. And I do expect us to come down so the wor like worst case, I guess, if you will, uh, while keeping the bullish momentum alive is gap filling about, you know, 206, this little gap we see over here. But uh, I'm kind of like eyeballing closer to 212 to 2, um, 212 to uh, what's it called? Uh, 210, roughly somewhere around there. If we go ahead and bring out the Fibonacci, right? For instance, let's say this is the high. Let's say this is the short term little rally that we had. And let's say we bring up the Fibonacci, right? You can see the 0.5 level sitting around $210.5 per share. That's kind of roughly where I personally would expect us to retrace to from here on out which can happen in just a few days, in all honesty, right? But then the good thing is, is I expect us to rally from there. So essentially, I'll give you a rough idea as to what I personally see happening. So again, let's just say somewhere around this area, we do reject, and then we go down, we come uh, somewhere to around this kind of 210-ish area, potentially as low as 206, but for now, let's just, for simplicity's sake, assume it's around, you know, 210-ish, 211, 212, somewhere around there. And then I think from there, we'll base, and then I think we'll go up even higher, and potentially even as high as all the way up to about the 250s in uh, November, which is gonna be really good to see, right? That's kind of the rough trajectory that I personally see. Again, it's a very bullish month, it's a very good month. We have Cybertruck at the end of the month. Wouldn't be surprised to see a rally into it as well, right? RSI is looking good. Remember how I talked about whenever we enter over sold territories it doesn't happen very often we usually get a decent bounce usually roughly to around the median or the like the, the the middle part of the rsi which is 50 we're pretty close to it right now as you can see actually can't see i'm blocking it but you can kind of see it right now we're you know we're pretty darn close to it right here right uh so you know that's important to understand like and on top of that you know ever since the very lows that we had all the way over here uh, just a few days ago, really, like literally four days ago, at about $194 per share, we had a four-day rally from the lowest point to the highest point of about 16, almost 17%, right? That's a sizable rally. You don't just get those kind of rallies and just still continue going up. It's very common once you get those kind of rallies at some point, usually sooner than later, especially right now, based on the way we close today, to get a bit of a cool off, a bit of a mini correction, if you will, right? And that's exactly what I think is gonna be coming to us, especially with the way we closed uh, today, uh, today's daily candle as well. So that's kind of the rough idea I'm overall expecting, right? Without making it too complicated though. The weekly candle, not looking too bad, honestly. It's looking pretty good, actually. In all honesty, it's actually looking pretty decent. Uh, so I think the overall trajectory is still very much up. It could have been a little bit prettier in terms of a hammer candle. The, the wick at the top is way too long for me to really consider this to be like an actual true hammer candle. It's close, though. It is really, really close. But it just... I'm a, I'm a little bit... I'm not super convinced, but nonetheless, it's still an overall, you know, overall massive, like, I guess, win for the bulls throughout the week, right? Beautiful bounce off the 200-day moving average, beautiful bounce off of this overall demand zone over here, right? This kind of green uh, rectangle, if you will. 
And we closed above it as well. And now we kind of, you know, got rejected at the middle part of this bull flag, which is this white line. So I do think we'll push higher. And I do think we'll ultimately go higher. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised, assuming the bullish momentum keeps, that we go up to about 250 is like as like the best case scenario, if you will, before we get like a real rejection, um, which is again going to be a retest of the top of the bull flag, number one. And on top of that, it'll be the retest of this massive channel that we broke down below, which again is also around 250. But as of right now, we find ourselves sandwiched in between the 21 EMA and the 200 day moving average, right? As usual, with these kind of situations, you want to play a more reactionary, in my opinion, and wait to see which one do we break above and even more importantly, start closing candles above or below, which can dictate. So, for instance, and let's say uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday, we actually get a rally and let's say i'm wrong we don't actually retrace and let's say we start closing candles above the 21 ema especially above 230 then i think we just continue i think we will just continue and move up even further to probably 240 and then i think we'll get our rejection right that's still a possibility right which is why i did take some chips off the table today i did sell some shares today but I'm still, I still have chips on the table as well, right? I'm about 50-50 right now, 50 cash, 50 uh, uh, in shares, essentially, like in the market on Tesla. That's kind of where my current stance is. Before, I was like 80-20 or something like that. So I did take some chips off the table on the shares that are profitable, which is great to see <coughs> because I do expect a sell-off. But in case I'm wrong, I still have chips on the table. So that's how I look at it. On the flip side, if we start closing candles below the 200-day moving average, like below 218, I guess, let's just say to make it simple, right, which is today's low end roughly where the 200-day moving average is on the daily, then I personally foresee us Again, playing out what I just said, going lower to about 210, 212. Worst case, realistically, to keep the bullish momentum alive will be somewhere around the kind of 206 ish area to keep this, um, to gap fill rather, that we left the gap just a couple of days ago. That is also a very real possibility. And don't forget, right, we did talk about how we could potentially still set up a cup and handle pattern. And in all honesty, the high that we had today is pretty close to being high enough, really, to set up this cup, right? Like it doesn't have to exactly go exactly to the decimal that this candle went to which is like 230.53 right just close enough and i personally believe this high that we had today about 226 and a half is pretty darn close man like it's not far off to the po to where you can easily consider the cup to have been formed like this right here can be the cup like it has been formed it's close enough and now we, what we do is we start forming the handle something again just a rough example but something like that right we start forming the handle this is what brings us downwards to that 212 ish area also can be looked at as a potential bull flag from here like this whoops let's go ahead and fix that you can just look at it as a simple bull flag like this as well like a very short-term bull, bull flag right uh, uh on the 65 minute chart also a possibility same purpose overall but ideally or uh, i guess the idea here rather is we again zigzag in through like this and then ultimately break up above Play out, the, play out this cup and handle pattern. Again, confirmation for this cup and handle pattern to kind of, assuming it's what it is, of course, assuming it, this is what it forms into, which I think it will, would be essentially a break above 226 to like 230. That will be the, that's like the uh, the neckline of the cup. If we break above 226 to 230, that's really good. So the way cup and handle patterns work is again, so you have the handle, right? So we have the cup, now we form the handle. And again, just a rough example, right? We zigzag through. Step one is just to break out, number one. Like we, whatever the, the, the top trend of this handle will be, kind of similar to what the bull flag is, like for instance, like in this weekly, right? Think of it like this. This will be essentially the handle just on that smaller time frame, right? As we're kind of zigzagging downwards. As we break the red line, whichever, whatever that'll be, we don't know what it is just yet. We haven't really started truly forming it, but whatever it ends up being, breaking above that is step number one. Step number two is breaking above that and breaking above the, uh, the neckline of the actual cup, which like I said, is gonna be somewhere around 226-ish to maybe close to 230s, right? Those are the two major like important steps to break, and that's what determines whether or not this pattern will play out. And again, the way you usually uh, kind of measure how far we go is you take it from the, from the bottom to the top of the cup. So again, something along the lines of this, just a very rough example, right? So you take this, something like this, right? Um, I'll go ahead and do that, right? Again, just a rough example. And then let's say we break out somewhere around this 212 area, just again, just for demonstrational purposes. Let's say we zigzag through, blah, 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 212, we break out, fantastic. And let's say we overall triggered the formation, we triggered the rally. You can see this brings us somewhere to around the mid 240s, which is my first main price target, with the second one being, of course, the 250s, which of course brings us pretty much exactly to the gap fill, brings us to that dreaded 240 to 242 resistance, in this case, level as well. And honestly, there is a chance that that will be the top for the short to medium term and then we overall get an ultimate rejection from there and move down even further that is a possibility but just you know figured i'd mention that just kind of food for thought take it as it will maybe we won't even form this cup and handle maybe instead what we do is form like i said before um an inverted um head and shoulders pattern so 
Oops. So we'll have, for instance, again, just a rough example. We have the left shoulder here. We'll have the head here. And then potentially maybe we just form the right shoulder somewhere around here. Also a possibility. And you measure it similar to this uh, way they measure cup and handle pattern. They're very similar in nature, in all honesty. But the idea is kind of similar where you measure from the bottom to the to the neckline. And then you kind of, you know, from the breakout. Uh, and then you go from there. Um, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. The point is that's what I'm seeing, right? The R size oversold, overbought rather, expect to retrace. Um, the MACD is kind of softening up on the 65 minute chart, but on the flip side, the daily you can see is trying to flip bullish, which is great to see as well. So that's going to be nice if we get some follow through there. The options flow, let's take a look at that very quickly. It's starting to look more bullish, looking more bullish, a lot more bullish, a lot less bearish than it did this morning. A lot more bullish now, which is great to see. No like complete crazy, crazy massive whale coming in, but you know, definitely a lot more green than red. That's for sure. So that's a good sign. So, you know, the bulls are starting to slowly step in and I think that'll continue, especially if we continue moving downwards to 212. And ultimately, I think we're setting up for a potential beautiful rally for the rest of November after a little bit, maybe a week or so of a little bit of pain, a little bit of, you know, correcting, if you will. And I think from there, we'll have a nice rally moving into the rest of the month. And I think it'll be a nice uh, way to kind of, you know, close out this month as we get closer to the end. So that's kind of the rough way I'm looking at it, ladies and gentlemen. So let me know what you think down below. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, helpful, whatever, don't forget to hit that like button. If I'm talking too fast, you can always play the video in 0.75 speed. I know I talk fast, especially when I get into something and I just really start kind of, you know, getting excited or like into the topic. I start rambling on a little quickly. My bad. It's just it is what it is. Um, but you can obviously reduce the speed on the video if that's an issue, of course. But nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed again, don't forget to hit that like button. Have a great weekend and we'll see you all on Monday. So until then, peace.